What is up, party people? So we are in Ruth chapter 4, verses 13 through 21. So this is where Ruth and Boaz marry, and it also sums up the genealogy of David. So let's jump in. Verse 13, so Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife, and he went into her, and the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a redeemer. May his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age for your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her lap and became his nurse. And the women of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now these are the generations of Perez. Perez fathered Hezron. Hezron fathered Ram. Ram fathered Amminadab. Amminadab fathered Nashon, Nashon fathered Salmon, Salmon fathered Boaz, Boaz fathered Obed, Obed fathered Jesse, and Jesse fathered David. So they wrap it up right there at the end with a neat little bow. That one of the important aspects of this is that it was a specific lineage to King David. That this union resulted in a child that led to King David. So this is the most romantic section of the whole book and all the legalism and plotting and whatever you want to call it, planning, I guess, not plotting, maybe. But out of all that, it says, you know, that you're... Where does it say that? Verse 15, He shall be to you a restorer of life, nourisher of your old age, for your daughter-in-law who loves you. It's literally the only place in the book the word love is used. And it's talking about Ruth loving Naomi selflessly. And this redemption happening through Ruth, who gives her firstborn to Naomi. So after everything she's already done, her firstborn goes to Naomi to restore her house because she was a Moabite. This redemption happens through Boaz, who takes on this costly redeeming of a household for himself. Now, of course, some people are going to be like, well, he got Ruth out of it, didn't he? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but I mean, that's clearly not the point. I think one of the most astounding things about this book is the humility and faithfulness of Ruth. She is not, she's the main character that all this happens through, and very little is actually said about her. We don't know very much about Ruth at all, but they're honoring her with this uh, book and saying that by following God and being a, an instrument of redemption, that she's fulfilling her, her highest and best purpose here, and that she's exhibiting love and selflessness. So I think it's... Um, <clears throat> You know, I didn't think that's the highlight of the book right there. Everyone is celebrating with Naomi who's been restored. It's She's been saved by God's providence, even though her family line had turned away. Again, I think it's another example of God using people that we don't expect. Ruth was a Moabite. Naomi, her whole family turned away from God's promised land. Uh, That's kind of my story. Like when I came up in the church, I grew up in the promised land. I grew up around people who were loving God and being faithful and not perfect, of course, but loving and caring. And I turned away from it for a while. I left the church. I was gone for over a decade. And then I realized that, no, I I do want to be in God's promises, that the things that God has in store for us is better than anything the world has. And there's that. So this whole turning away and then turning back, that's, that's a very human thing. And I think that kind of gets, you know, that gets tossed on the back burner in this story. But I think that's an important theme here. That actually this family line had turned away from God's promises, realized that that's actually where it was, came back. And how do they implement and take part in God's promises? It's through fulfilling the law. Not acting legalistic, not acting pharisaical, not coming up with their own rules, but getting at the intent of God's law 
which this book highlights, is redemption and reconciliation. Naomi is reconciled to the tribe of Judah, as is Ruth, who's a Moabite. She had no stake in, the, in this at all. She had no rights to come in other than the rights given to her by Israel's law. So she came in and started gleaning. She's taking advantage of these generosity, the generosity of the law, and the, the, she's taking advantage of the fact that the law is for redemption and reconciliation. And I think that's a theme we see throughout the book. I mean, it's very important and it gets overlooked, especially if we look at this as simply a love story. I think that puts the motive in the wrong place. At no point is the motive here romantic love. In fact, if anything, it's shown as a hindrance to it. Because in chapter 3, it's showing this contrast between lusts and passions and, and this whole idea of lying down and taking part in something kind of tawdry and, and not appropriate for the time. It actually says, wait, 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 wait. Boaz is a man, right? It's actually, this is a great picture of biblical, biblical masculinity as well. But that, that gets in the way, if anything. The whole point is that the loving actions were from Ruth to Naomi and selflessly um, taking part in this faithful going back to God's house, the house of bread, Bethlehem, Judah. So I, th I think that's important. One thing I will, since I brought it up, Boaz is a picture of biblical masculinity. When we see him, he's a diligent worker. He's a manager. He's taking care of his house. He knows what's happening in his house. That's how he knows about Ruth coming into the fields. He's generous. He's, he's got a generosity to him. He has generosity because he's a diligent worker. He has built up a position in the community where he can be generous to the foreigner, the widow, the, and he's acting out of generosity there. He's also taking initiative here. Uh, we see that when Ruth comes to him, that he, he's like, nope, I'm going to keep God first. I'm actually going to respect you. I'm going to respect God's law. There's somebody that you know, I would be breaking the intent of the law if I did not speak to and be honest with the other people that have a claim to this redemption story. He does that, right? He generously does that. He's a man of his word. He takes initiative to take care of it quickly. He goes and he does all that. This is a great picture of biblical masculinity. And he's not the youngest guy on the block. He's not, that's another picture, uh, you know, that's another pointing to Ruth doing the right thing and having the right priorities. She didn't go for, you know, a younger, she had the chance way back when, when Naomi said, hey, go back, find a young man in your own household with your own gods, with all, and she said, no, there's something about your God and you that I want to be a part of. All of it culminating in this redemption through Ruth. So, there we go, wrapping up the book. We'll get into some of the themes. I'll have a couple videos about the themes in Ruth coming up, but that's about it. Put down below what you really liked about this book. Like and subscribe to catch all these videos as they come out. Again, I'm reading through the text, going through some of the high-level orthodox, you know, big-picture ideas in the Bible uh, quickly so that people can get a good idea for that. Like and subscribe to catch all the videos as they come out, and uh, I'll catch you soon. All right? Peace.